Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour, bienvenue. Je suis très heureux de vous accueillir dans cet événement qui est désormais à la fois récurrent, traditionnel, un moment d'échange, de partage et aussi de rencontre avec cette année une thématique qui nous porte tous dans la dynamique, dans l'entrepreneuriat, dans un futur positif, cette formidable jeunesse. Et on va débuter cette université d'été du MEDEF version 2015 avec une rencontre exceptionnelle, une invitée exceptionnelle, Sa Majesté la Reine Rania Al-Abdullah de Jordanie qui nous fait l'immense privilège et l'honneur d'être avec nous cet après-midi en compagnie de Pierre Gattaz. Pierre Gattaz, le président du MEDEF qui est actuellement juste à côté, est en train d'accueillir la Reine comme il se doit et ensuite la Reine nous rejoindra ici sur scène. Je vous demande évidemment de lui réserver l'accueil le plus chaleureux. Les voici qui pénètrent dans cette tente malakoff médéric Sa Majesté, la Reine Rania Al-Abdullah de Jordanie. Un immense honneur, un privilège d'avoir Sa Majesté, la Reine Rania Al-Abdullah de Jordanie, alors que les photographes sont en train d'immortaliser ce, ce moment à l'occasion de cette première journée de l'université d'été du MEDEF ici à jouer en Josas. Je vous demande d'accueillir de, Pierre Gattaz, le président du MEDEF. Merci. Monsieur Pierre Gattaz, qui nous rejoint. Ah, je crois que on va commencer. Nous allons commencer. Bonjour à toutes et à toutes. I would like uh, to say today that it's uh, an exceptional honor. It's an exceptional honor for the business community of France to welcome Her Majesty Queen Rania Al Abdullah of Jordan. And, and I can think of no one better placed to open our event. Queen Rania works tirelessly for empowerment of people and of communities, and particularly for youth and education. She's not only head of her own foundation supporting education and youth, but she's also an ambassador, a leader for many national and international organizations and initiatives in this field. The Queen believes in the essential link between youth, between education and businesses for the growth of countries. MEDEF supports the Foundation Queen Rania, especially Queen Rania Center for Entrepreneurship, which objective is to develop entrepreneurship in Jordan. Your Majesty, It's with, with a great honor, an honor that I give you the floor now. Thank you very much. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, mes amis, c'est avec grand plaisir que je me retrouve aujourd'hui parmi vous. 
The Meta of Summer University is beginning to feel like it might be the start of a family tradition. First my husband, now me. I'm going straight home to tell my eldest son to brush up on his French. In any case, it's an honor to be with you all. Thank you for inviting me. When His Majesty was here in 2008, he praised the special relationship France and Jordan share and the common goals that bind us. He spoke of the promise of our collective futures and the security that underpins them. And he urged trade-led economic growth as a pathway to jobs and opportunity for our young people. A lot has changed since then. His Majesty's vision for Jordan and the region of peace and prosperity for all remains steadfast, of course, as does our friendship with the people of France. But the geopolitical landscape of the Middle East has undergone seismic shifts, threatening not just our region, but way beyond our borders. The Arab Spring set in motion a brutal cycle of conflict and instability. Tourism and trade are suffering. There are record numbers of refugees. Countries hosting refugees are buckling under the strain. And Daesh, the so-called Islamic State, continues to spread its evil ideology with terror tactics, not only maligning Islam and Muslims at every turn, but changing global perceptions of our region. And while there is a concerted military effort to defeat them, moderate Muslims the world over are not doing enough to win the ideological struggle at the heart of this battle. Of course, we're not actively helping Daesh, but we're not actively stopping them either. And we can't stand against them until we, as Muslims, agree on what we stand for. And we won't agree on anything until we have an open, honest, and yes, difficult dialogue about what Islam is, who Muslims are, and how we tackle this extremist ideology growing on the fringes of our peaceful and compassionate faith. Meanwhile, Daesh is busy achieving its short-term and long-term goals. In Syria and Iraq, it's conquering lands, instilling fear, and murdering thousands. Further afield, it's dominating the news, and with the skill of a global media giant, rebranding our region as a bloody and lawless wasteland. Each headline of horror, each vile video, undermines global trust in the region and sows the seeds of fear, all to justify its twisted agenda, to swell the ranks of its desperate followers, to destroy what's been built, and to drag the region back to the Dark Ages. Like any strategic media campaign, it's working. Perceptions of the region are changing. All the great things about our rich region are diverse cultures, award-winning ecotourism, burgeoning technologies, innovative young people are being lost in the fog of negativity. Don't believe me? Let's play a word association game. I say Middle East, you think of what? Awe inspiring lands dating from biblical times? The desert scape made famous by Lawrence of Arabia? Red Sea coral reefs? The rose red city of Petra? The most hospitable people you've ever met? Probably not. Chances are when you hear Middle East, you think of conflict, terrorism, and instability or your least likely holiday destination. Again, I say Muslim, you think of what? Someone who's devout and peace-loving? Someone who helps a neighbor in need? Someone who reveres his parents and his family? Someone who, as we say, does good with his right hand while his left hand knows nothing of it? I'd like to think so, but I expect you think of violent extremists, beheadings, bombings, and bloodbaths. And I expect that the terrible massacre 
and the offices of Charlie Hebdo left those perceptions even more entrenched. There is no doubt that these negative perceptions compound the already harsh reality on the ground. We are facing a time of great peril. But as Victor Hugo once said, great perils have this beauty that they bring to light the fraternity of strangers. My region needs that global fraternity now more than ever. And the people who need the friendship of strangers, your friendship most right now, are our fabulous young people, especially young refugees who should be chasing their dreams and achieving their ambitions like their peers here in France and all over the world, but who are instead trapped in a conflict not of their making, their futures on hold. But they're not alone in facing obstacles because all of the region's young people have to contend daily with the challenges of living in an unstable region. The greatest challenge is that one quarter of them is unemployed. Even with, school, with high school certificate and university degrees, they find that their skills for today's job market are outdated or the jobs just aren't there. So you can forgive them for feeling disgruntled, except they're not. Many of them are proving that it's often in the darkest skies that we see the brightest stars. While Daesh tries to drag us backwards, our young people drive us forwards, embracing the promise of the 21st century. Hungry for success and eager to leverage the new digital landscape, many young Arabs are starting their own businesses. Companies such as B-Labs, a Jordanian gaming company whose war game, ShipShip, was ranked best new app on Apple's App Store. Or Ghazza's Maryam Abutawi. Her app, Wasilni, echoes services like Lyft. Or Clear Day, the largest paid weather app in the world, developed by Egypt's own Am Ramadan. And these bright stars are not alone. Recent studies estimate that between 2005 and 2011, there was an eight-fold increase in startups in the region. This can-do spirit is reflected in this year's Arab Youth Survey, which shows that two in five of our fabulous young people, that's 39%, intend to start their own businesses in the next five years. Great news. But what of the others who cannot start businesses, find jobs, or build the futures they want? who cannot overcome the practical obstacles of instability or counter the negative perceptions of their homeland. For our young people to be truly fabulous and to realize fabulous futures, they need three things. Education, opportunities, and jobs. And I'm going to add a fourth. They need a little bit of luck too, someone to believe in them. Hands down, the best start in life for every child is education. So in Jordan, we're reforming our education system at every level, including investing in teachers and technologies. Last year, I launched IDRAQ, an initiative to bring massive open online courses in Arabic to our region. And the reaction has been fantastic. In just one year, over 220,000 registered and over 12,000 have completed courses in entrepreneurship, interview prep, computer science, sustainable energy, filmmaking, and so much more. In other words, our young people are hungry for knowledge and skills. Give them an opportunity and they'll run with it. So we need to invest in more opportunities. School to work transitions, internships, mentor programs, business incubators, initiatives that will help them get their foot on the ladder. Most important, we must create more jobs. Just to absorb, this, this is a tough challenge, because just to absorb new entrants into the labor market, we need to create over 100 million jobs by 2020. And when I say we, I mean all of us. Government, private sector, philanthropists, and civil society in the East and West, working together, investing in our young people. This isn't an ideal, it's an imperative. 
Failure is not an option. Because if we fail, the extremists win. And if they win, the region unravels fast. And if the region unravels, the world will feel the aftershocks for a long time to come. We must create jobs and opportunities for our young people, not only for their sakes, but for the collective security of our region and our world. After all, it's Arab youth who will, as they forge their own paths and find their own success, reshape and rebrand the Middle East. They are the entrepreneurs and innovators, the mediators and peacemakers, the CEOs and social media influencers. They are the people who will lay the foundations of a more stable, a more safe and prosperous tomorrow for us all. So we must believe in them and invest in them. And I want to challenge each of you to do your part because there's never been a better time to invest in the Middle East. And the returns are high, financially, socially, politically, and morally. In fact, the only losers are the extremists. Seven years ago, in his speech to the Medev Summer University, His Majesty said, we will not allow regional instability and crises to shape our future. And with your support, with the fraternity of strangers soon to be friends, it won't. Rather, our fabulous young people will be torchbearers of a brave new Middle East. Thank you all. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great honor, Your Majesty, that you accepted to open our session. We, uh, your initiatives are a model for us, an example for us. We totally share your convictions that business development is a key uh, for growth of the Middle East. We share your convictions that business development and the link between youth, business, and uh, other uh, nice areas are the key for uh, jobs and key for youth. And uh, we admire your vision. We admire your fights. We admire your humanitarian values. So thank you again for all this business, French business community in this room. Uh, you are a model, and I would like just to say that we look uh, forward to strengthening even more our um, relationships between your, our two countries. Thank you, thank you again, Your nice. Majesty. Sa Majesté. La reine Rania Al Abdullah de Jordanie, que je vous demande d'applaudir encore une fois chaleureusement. C'était un honneur et un privilège de l'avoir à nos côtés pour l'ouverture de cette université d'été du MEDEF 2015.